everyone, and welcome back to UE5 VP Guru. Today, we're going to be back in our Pokemon clone tutorial, the multiplayer one. And we are going to be finally loading in our battle world into the rest of the world. And um, this is, again, I think I explained this a little bit last time, but this is so we can uh, have our fights going on quite seamlessly uh, in the distance and we will never have to leave the actual world. So to accomplish this, we're going to need to go into our third person character. And um, we're going to need a branch. I didn't need that one, though. We actually need to hold down S and click to get a sequence node. Plug that in. Plug the zero into the player controller here. This is so this continues to work as expected. Um, and then from the one, we're going to plug this into a branch. We're going to right click and type level. And we're going to load level instance by name. Plug that in uh, to the branch on the true. And that's kind of all we need to do at the moment. Come to the level name and put in the name of your level. Now make sure that it is case sensitive. So make sure it all matches up. So for me, if I come down here, I can see that I called it grass battle level with a capital G, a capital B and a capital L. So I've done exactly the same thing there. The next thing we want to do is we want to get an, a, a multiplayer node called is locally controlled. The reason we're using this is because we want to spawn one of these for every single player on the server, but we want them to be unique to that player. So even though if you looked on every single screen of every single attached player, you would always see a battle world in the same location as the other player. The only difference is, is theirs is unique to them. So what this does is it stops like 10 players joining the battle world and all trying to fight at the same time with 10 different creatures so this will make sure this is unique to that player now for this setup what we're doing today i found that 5000 and 5000 works pretty well for loading in the load level it's it's far enough away that we can test this um you know as it's it's, it's not going to interrupt the rest of the game but you'll need to find a perfect spot to place it in your game the reason i say that is because you know if you put it very high in the sky it's still going to cast a shadow and what you don't want is that shadow to appear on the rest of your world map uh, otherwise players are going to see it and they're going to know it's going to ruin the immersion if they know the battle world is like you know a thousand two thousand three thousand um miles in the sky they're going to see it right they're going to know it's there so you want to place it in a location where it's not going to be anywhere in the way of your world map. And when we swap these in and out, you're going to want to make sure that all of those other levels are spawned in the same location again. So you know that they're not going to get in the way of anything. So 5,000, 5,000 is going to work for what we're doing here today. But you'll need to find a good location in your world. And uh, as going back to what I'm saying, you know, this is still... A viable option for doing this for single player as well. You'll see this working in single player long before you see it working in multiplayer. Um, so just bear that in mind. So yeah, that's what the is locally controlled does. It's going to spawn it in, but it's only going to spawn it in for that client. It's not going to spawn it in on the server for everyone, and you end up with like one thousand battle worlds loaded in, etc. Um, the next thing we need to do now. I'm just going to delete those for now. I don't think we need to use those at the minute. This is the battle proxy. This is basically going to control how the flow of battle works. But before we get to there, what we need to do is uh, we actually need to spawn in a battle proxy as well. So the battle proxy will control like, the camera, the movements, you know, the attacks, the damage, everything. It's going to control all the battles side of things. But we want to spawn one in when we need one. We don't want it to be... Unlike the battle proxy world, we don't want it to be in uh, the game every time. So what we're going to do today um, is we're going to get the battle proxy spawned in. And then in the next episode, we can start on the battle proxy code and, and get things spawned in. And you'll be able to see all the different changes. So um, what we're going to do is we need to create a custom event. And we're going to call this SP uh, Battle Start. This is our single player battle start. We're going to create a multiplayer version of this as well down the line. 
But for now, we're going to concentrate on getting the single player right. And the multiplayer is so much easier just to, to get working on top of the single player code. You'll, you'll understand as we go on. Um, and for now, all we're going to do is spawn uh, actor from class. And that class is going to be um, the battle proxy BP. And there's a bunch of things we're going to need to have show up on here. Um, but for now, let's just do this. And just to make sure. Ooh, oh, yeah, because it needs a spawn transform. Um, let's split and compile. That should be fine. Uh, it doesn't matter where it spawns, by the way, because no one will be able to see it. It's not a physical thing you can see. And we spawn and destroy it every time. So you won't need to worry about uh, seeing any of where, like where it is and all that sort of stuff. Um, we will need to do a is locally controlled as well on this, by the way. <clears throat> but that's fine. So um, we'll need a bunch of information. But just to test that this is working, what we're going to do is we're just going to do a camera switch. And what we're going to do is we're going to set the camera to the overview camera. And we'll just see if it works. Um, and to get this working, what we're going to do is we're going to go uh, into our creature information, find our encounter BP, and at the very end of our encounter code, we're going to run a cast to third person character. No, not the class. We've got that wrong. Third person character. We're going to get player character. And we're going to uh, run the SP battle start code uh, because we're always going to want this single player code for this type of um, function. We're not going to want a multiplayer one because the the wild team is always going to be uh, what it is, right? It's going to always be a single player event. Um, great. Now let's just test to see if this pushes us through to the battle world. Now, first things first, before we actually go running around anywhere, let's just actually make sure that it's spawned in. So if we click on the little eject button at the top there, you can see over here, we have our two wonderful NPCs and no po no Pokemon at the moment, but we will eventually have Pokemon there. And if it's a wild battle, one of those will disappear. Um, let's jump back into the gamepad and let's just see if it sends us over there. You should be able to just run around for a bit. There we go. And we're in. We're in the battle world. That's the overview. So we can see that would be, uh, this would be our enemy trainer if we were having an enemy trainer battle. Now, of course, I haven't actually properly organized cameras and got them working. But um, fingers crossed, this will um, all come together at the end. Um, and you'll be able to see it working. But yeah. Obviously, if um, if we aren't in a trainer battle or a multiplayer battle, this um, character would obviously be invisible. We would He'd be there or she would be there, but we would never see them. It, they would just not be visible. And then we'd see the wild Pokemon somewhere here and ours somewhere sort of here, hopefully. Um, but yeah, so at least that's spawned in now. That's great. And um, we should, in theory... Be good to go for the next um the next part but we're gonna just quickly work on some of this uh bit here just so we know it's working um and hopefully by the end of this it should stop us from doing things like moving and, and all that sort of stuff so for the single player because uh we don't want this to be controlled by more than one we also need to check uh, if it's locally controlled, uh, which it will be. Uh, we're going to remove all widgets. So like our player HUD and things like that will disappear. We're then going to get our player controller, like so. And we're going to show mouse cursor. So set the mouse show mouse cursor to true. Um, and we're also going to set the UI mode. Uh, set the mode to UI only. Just uh, 
put a little reroute node so it stays nice and tidy. And uh, we then also want to uh, get our character movement and set movement mode to none. Uh, we also need to create, uh, get our is host boolean, and we need to set that to true. And the reason we set that to true is because in the battle code, everything that we determine about this battle will um, be controlled by this, uh, whether we are the host or not. Um, and you can probably already see, hopefully you can start to see how the multiplayer will, will shape up using that as well. Uh, we need to set up uh, a second custom event. Uh, and this will be to take uh, take um, the reins on anything um, that we need to do at the end. Take care of all those sort of end game stuff. Um, we will need to get our trainer Pokemon. Get trainer Pokemon. And we're also going to set members set the members plug that in and this is going to be our trainer party we want to set and that's going to come straight from this battle end uh, and then we need to obviously reset our trainer pokemon so <clears throat> um the reason for this is so that uh when we end the battle the team's health and stuff comes through still correctly uh back into our trainer um and from this point again we're gonna see if it's locally controlled hopefully there we go um is locally controlled yeah um we want to we're gonna need to obviously get some variables from this down the line um which again you'll see but let's just do it to for now to um not that one um we're gonna set up the actual skeleton of it and then we can put the rest in when we have the right variables so we come off the is true now here will be a reference to the two pokemon that are in battle currently um and what we will be doing is we're going to be destroying them so the winner will eventually get destroyed so he's not in the field anymore uh, and then we need to do the same again and it's basically just checking if uh either of those pokemon are still alive uh, i'm going to bring this down a little bit so we've got a bit more space um and then once that's done we're going to remove all widgets again which will again be kind of like um, the battle uh, widget that we need to set up. And then we're going to eventually create a widget. Create widget, which will be, I can't plug this in yet because it will error out. But to be fair, it might still error out. No, it didn't. We're going to add to viewport eventually our player hud that we're going to create that will go here and then to finish off we just need to reset um a bunch of this stuff so do all of this um plug that in we'll, we'll plug it directly in for now um we need to change that ui mode to uh game mode uh set mode Wait there, let's just do um, set input uh, mode game only. And uh, we'll plug that into there and plug that into there. Get that for one gone. Don't know why I couldn't pull that from the player character, but uh, from the uh, player controller. Uh, and then we need to reset our movement mode. Uh, back here, there we go. And. Um, the last thing we will need to do is eventually we'll need a reference to the battle proxy. Well, we might as well do that now. Promote this to a variable, this spawn battle proxy. Promote to variable. We'll call it um, battle proxy uh, ref, like so. 
and we'll get that and we will destroy the actor plug that in there and do that and then um the last thing we need to do so if you remember we had this encounter box reference so the last thing we need to do for this is we need to get uh we need to check if it's valid first so are we in an encounter box reference and if we are we want to get spawn timer and we want to unpause the timer by handle only if it's valid do we want to do that and that should kind of fix the end of the battle but that's something that we'll we we won't even touch until down the line we'll have a player hud i'm sure by then and things like that um so fingers crossed this will all work <laughs> in the next episode so we already know the battle proxy is working uh this will obviously all work uh which is fine uh we know the battle proxy is spawning because we can see the overview um so at the end of this episode you should have your battle world loaded in and you should have your battle proxy uh spawning in as well and um you should be able to test this by going into the encounter vp uh and eventually loading you in to the battle world those those are the the two things that we should have by the end of this episode so obviously if not give me a shout in the discord uh, in the member section i'll be more than happy to uh talk you through if you're stuck on anything and also don't, feel free to ask me questions if there's anything you don't understand or like why i did what i did um please give me a shout and i'm more than happy to explain it in the discord just just pop it in the members section and i will uh, prioritize you guys first um so thank you so much guys i'll see you in the next episode much love take care bye